I'm Robert Schuch. You've heard me talk about using manual settings when adjusting the exposure on your camera, but what exactly do we mean by exposure time and f-stop? Welcome to the 3 Minute Photography Tip, Episode 4. Whether you're shooting digitally or on film, the medium, either the digital sensor or the film emulsion, records image brightness in response to how much light it receives. Both the intensity of the light and the duration of the exposure to the light matter. A bright scene exposed for a short period will be equivalent to a dimmer scene exposed for a longer time. That's why those handheld indoor shots you took without a flash came out blurry, while those you took at the park are just fine. The camera had to use a longer exposure time to make up for the lower light level. Does all of this seem too abstract? Let's have a look at an actual camera iris and shutter. The iris consists of a series of thin metal leaves that form a roughly circular opening in the center of the camera lens, much like the pupil in your eye. To adjust this opening, you need to change the aperture setting on your camera. Don't worry about the funny looking decimal numbers for now. That's a topic for another episode. Just remember, the smaller the F number, the more light is let in and vice versa. In addition to controlling the iris, you can also set the shutter speed. Unlike human eyes, the camera can control exposure only by allowing light in for a certain time, usually a fraction of a second. Here are some exposures taken at different exposure times. Tenth of a second. One twenty-fifth of a second. One second at f8. That is equivalent to a quarter of a second at f4. Now, to manually control your camera's exposure, you'll need to set both the aperture and shutter speed. You get to choose a combination of the two, but only the right combination will give you the right exposure. If you cut the exposure time in half, you'll have to open the iris to let in twice as much light. Here's a quick tip. Use the semi-automatic modes A and TV, or S if you're an icon user, to manually set either the aperture or shutter and have the camera automatically set the other. This lets you work quickly while still retaining control over the combined settings. So which combination to choose? Remember the blurry photos I mentioned at the beginning? To avoid that, you'll want a shutter speed not much below a hundredth of a second. A sixtieth might be okay if everyone is holding still. If your camera is reporting speeds much lower than that, decrease the F number to let in more light. You may also have to increase your ISO setting if the iris is already wide open. We'll talk about that next time. If you've enjoyed today's lesson, click the like button or, even better, add this video to your favorites for others to discover. And don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss out when the next episode is released. Thanks for your support.